back in the day, setting up a car uh, meant opening the bonnet, fiddling with fuel mixtures, pumping up tyres, switching them out. In 2024, it's more akin to choosing settings in a laptop and there's no need to get your hands dirty at all, thankfully. But there are still decisions to be made here on my Toyota hybrid, though I'm sure a lot of what I'm about to say applies to other hybrids and EVs. Let's start with the driving mode. Toyota offers eco, normal and power. The thing is that the accelerator or throttle pedal on a modern hybrid or EV isn't directly connected by a cable to a valve which lets in more fuel, as in traditional cars. Instead, it's all drive by wire, wherein both pedals are connected to sensors that provide input to the car's computers. And it's those that control the speed at which motors turn on, if appropriate, an engine runs or doesn't run. So the difference between drive modes comes down to a multiplier number in the software. With Eco, you press the pedal and you get a small acceleration from motors and or engine. With power, you execute the same press and get a far more dramatic acceleration response and with normal mode somewhere in between. Although I'd been happy to stay in Eco mode for most of my new car's first thousand miles as instructed, to be gentle and try to run the engine side of things in. Now that I'm free, free, I'm driving in normal mode, not least because I've had a couple of situations where I needed to accelerate smartly to get into a gap in traffic and eco mode felt too sluggish to get in. And the odd thing is that the fuel economy hasn't changed at all. My average remains 73.6 miles per gallon as I record this. So I'm guessing that Although the combustion engine fires up in more concentrated and intense bursts, it's also on for slightly less time overall, so the effect is cancelled out. I do try and keep the revs the right side of Toyota's on-dash eco power line where possible. By the way, apologies for rain on the roof. It's all a bit drizzly in the UK at the moment. Incidentally, the other buttons and modes aren't worth stressing about. EV mode is for starting off in guaranteed electric mode in quiet neighbourhoods, but unless it's a freezing cold day, the engine will start in EV mode automatically anyway. The engine won't cut in until you accelerate over 20 miles an hour, so a quiet getaway is ensured with a slow getaway. Don't I want to annoy the neighbours? And B driving mode, much misunderstood by other reviewers, is for engine braking only, designed not to overstress the hybrid battery on a long sleep decline. I've not had to use this at all yet, though I think holidaying in coastal hilly regions might one day do it. Then there are all the safety systems, which can be turned off if you prefer. Now, why would you want to turn off safety systems? Well, I haven't, but I can understand why some people might. Having a car which thinks it's smarter than you and can nudge the steering or apply the brakes on its own can be a little disconcerting. Several times I've had to cross the centre of road markings, for example, to overtake a parked car, and had the lane assist try to resist the manoeuvre just a little bit. And I've been in traffic and the car's PDA, Proactive Driving Assist, has assessed that I'm just a bit too close to the vehicle in front and started braking. In each case, a green indicator pulses on the dash to confirm what's happening and, well, I'm getting used to it. I think I'd rather have the system on for the occasion that my attention is genuinely wavering, I miss something important, or for when someone else does something stupid in front of me. In those cases, an, an extra initial dose of steering and braking could mean the difference between an accident and just a near miss. There's also RSA, road sign assist, which sounds like a gimmick, and it kind of is. It's supposed to use the forward cameras to spot and recognise speed limit and other relevant signs replicating them on the dash so that in theory you always know the speed limit of the current road and it beeps quietly when that limit changes or to nag you when you go over the limit. There's also a speed limit database that's supposed to be updated over the air using the car's data connection but in my experience every time the dash shows the speed limit wrong it's because it missed the physical sign because it was obscured by trees. Somewhat annoyingly, even if I wanted to, I can't turn most of this off permanently as they turn themselves back on every time you start the car. It does seem that a lot of modern car safety systems vary in their defaults according to the country they're being sold in and the local regulations, which I suppose is fair enough. Like most people, I think I'm a good driver, but I recognise that as I get older, my reactions and awareness and hand-eye coordination are bound to reduce gradually. So on balance, the more help I can get from my car's cameras computers, the better. So I'm leaving everything on. 